Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com and welcome to Watch and Learn number 7. In today's video I'm going to be discussing something that is on one of the most iconic watches uh, of our time, the Speedmaster. Uh, maybe the second most iconic watch after the sub. Uh, the Speedmaster has a... I'm wearing mine, my, my Speedy Reduce. I guess this is my wristwatch check. Uh, it has this... Uh, the bezel, instead of being a rotating bezel, is a tachometer. A lot of people own a Speedmaster. Um, if not, you might own a watch with uh, a tachometer on it, and you don't know what it does. And so I'm going to explain what it is in this video, and I guess that was my wristwatch check. I'll also show you what I'm wearing on the other wrist, my Bulova Accutron Space View. Hums along. Uh, and so I'm going to go onto the, we'll go onto the tabletop, and I'll show you that the uh, tachometer up close, discuss how it works, how you use it, and then I'm also going to bring a couple of other watches into the mix. I've got uh, a Zeppelin here that's got a couple of scales around the outside that you might find interesting, as well as a uh, pulsometer watch. So let's bring it over to the table and we'll get into the discussion on the tachymeter. Okay guys, so here is the speed that I just showed you before. Uh, the watch, I, I doubt needs any introduction. This is actually a Speedmaster Reduced. This is my own piece. Uh, you can tell by, it's got nice scratches on it. Um, I am in. I am not interested in polishing those off at all. Uh, I do like what they do to the watch, and it reminds me that it is an old piece and it's been through a lot. Uh, this dates back to. Sounds like a relic. It's not though. It dates back to uh, 1994. So, this is the moon watch. It's an automatic, and we see around the dial uh, the bezel, not a rotating bezel. It's a tachometer. Uh, M e t r e. M-E-T-E-R, it's all the same, but it is not a tachometer. A tachometer like you find in a, a car, you know, they used to just be in manuals, but now they're in automatics as well. Uh, manual car shifts, and automatic car shifts, I mean. A tachometer there measures revolutions per minute of the engine. This is a little bit different. This is more of a conversion tool. It is meant to be used in conjunction with the chronograph, so you'll know that if I press the top right button, you'll watch the, the large seconds hand it will start to move around the dial. The tachymeter is meant to measure things that happen in less than 60 seconds usually. You can stretch it out to 70 or 80 seconds if your watch has the scale going to that level, but generally it's less than 60 seconds. And what you do is you time an event, any event, I'm going to call it a unit. Uh, you time a unit and then when that unit is done you hit stop. And then whatever the second hand is pointing to on the tachymeter, in this instance it's 120. That would mean that you could do 120 of those things in an hour. I say unit because it's almost a it's a unitless property. I can make this someone running someone running a thousand meters, I could say it's someone running a mile, I could say it's a car traveling a mile, uh, I could say it's a lot of different things. And, and that's the beauty of it. All these values really are, you know, they stop at 60 at the 60, and they increase counterclockwise, uh, and it would increase to infinity at zero. Uh, at one second, it's an extremely large value, uh, 3,600 or so. Uh, and if you look at it and you decide to do the math, you will learn that the value on the tachymeter is simply 3,600 divided by the number of seconds that the seconds hand is pointing to. So at 10 seconds, 3,600 over 10, it would be 360, and you'll see that 350 is right here. So it makes sense that 360 would be right there. I'll bring uh, I'll bring up some charts later. I'll show you. I graphed it so you can see how it looks. But you'll notice that like I said, it starts at 60. It goes to 65 almost in one increment per second. And then it really starts to speed up. So here's the distance between 60 and 70. The distance between 70 and 80 is even shorter. 80 and 90 is even shorter. And it progressively compresses and compresses, and it gets... Uh, it really builds in compression all the way up to uh, the end of the dial. You'll also notice that to account for this, they go in one part increments, and then it goes in five part increments, and then tens, 100, 110, 120, 130. When it gets up to 200, it goes in 25s. When it gets up to 300, it goes by 50s, and then it goes by 100. This is simply aesthetics. It's the only reason. It does have a certain visual appeal to it. It's not random. They pick these numbers because they look nice. The spacing looks nice. But again, I will get into this with the chart so you can see what's really going on with the numbers and how they are blowing up. Uh, I had mentioned in the beginning that some 
tachymeters will go more than 60 seconds, so they'll have a wraparound scale. So 60, and then it'll be like a, a 50, a 40, uh, going down here, and then lapping under these larger numbers, almost like a two-part meter. The Speedmaster obviously was the, you know, worn by the Apollo astronauts, you know, not the first watch in space, but definitely the first watch on the moon. If you've seen the Apollo 13 movie, you'll see that they do use it to time stuff. Uh, I'm sure that was done in real life, and there's no doubt, there's no reason to fake that. Did they really use a tachymeter, though? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's, re I don't know if you can really use it for anything, you know, that important anymore. It is interesting in that, like I said before, it is kind of unitless. So, I mean, this could be, you know, packing a box, and you could time somebody, and you could say, how long does it take them to pack a box? And you hit start when they started packing the box. And you could hit stop when they stop packing the box. And you'd say, wow, that person can, pa can box, pack 500 boxes an hour. I mean, just a, a way to think about it. So it's, uh, all it is really is a units conversion. Uh, I like to call it a conversion and an inversion. Of course, it's inverting from time per unit. So it's really seconds per unit. It's converting into units per hour. That is the tachymeter. So here's a quick chart that I made up, and you'll notice that at the bottom, we have seconds per unit. That is what the seconds hand will point to on the watch, uh, is for, you know, in reading time off the dial. And then up here is the reading on the tachymeter, what they call a units per hour. Now, I had said before, I maybe I'll write this out, that it's like a conversion and an inversion. So it's really converting seconds per unit. You know, somebody has commented in the last video that I had great handwriting. I don't. That was written... Uh, <laughs> with a lot of time on my hands. This is not. Uh, it's seconds per unit is turning into units per hour. So it's an inversion. Units goes from the bottom to the top. And it's a conversion. Seconds turns into hours. In America, we use, you know, miles per hour. In you know, Europe, it's kilometers per hour. It all works. It doesn't make a difference if you're measuring kilometers, hours, or, 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 or packing a pie. It doesn't matter. You know, if you're Lucille Ball and you're getting pies off the uh, conveyor belt. So like I said, so units per hour is up here. This is the reading on the, on the tachometer. So, you know, the tachometer goes up to a couple of hundred. Um, and so it's like somewhere around here. So you'll see that that's around, uh, what, two, four, you know, six seconds. You know, there's a large area here where it shoots up to infinity because, you know, you at zero, it's going to, at zero, it is infinity. At one second, it's going to be around 3,600. So that's somewhere, what, around here, one second. Uh, but obviously, you know, those, those lines don't come off onto, on the watch because as you go from zero to five seconds, you know, your, your tachymeter results fall off extremely fast. So what I did then was I just, uh, I took the same plot and I, just zoomed in on kind of like five seconds out. Here's the same plot, just focusing on five seconds and going out to 60, and then you could see that the units fall off. Um, but again, it is an extremely rapid fall off in the beginning, and then it gets more and more gradual. Now, if you really like to geek out on this stuff, and, and maybe some of you will enjoy this, I did take it and I plotted it on log log paper. Now, if you don't get this, don't worry about it. If you do get it, you're probably jumping in your seat right now. Uh, on log log paper, you'll see it is a straight line, so it's more or less a, a, a logarithmic curve. Uh, and all this means is that it falls off really fast. Um, for a little bit of space, you go a lot of distance. So that was the tachymeter. I'd like to just pull up, you know, two more scales um, that might be on a wristwatch. One fairly rare, the other one eh, kind of rare, not extremely common. So the first one I want to talk about is the one on the inner scale here. I'm going to bring it up super close. And just dial. This is a Graf Zeppelin, by the way. Gorgeous dial. Uh, it's like a silver white, but it, it makes hell for camera work. See on the inner, in, in blue, it's written telemeter. Whoops. See telemeter right there? What that scale does, where it says one kilometer, two kilometer, three kilometer, it's translating elapsed time into distance. So the idea behind a telemeter is that it's measuring distance. The most common distance measurement that we use is, is, with, st is with thunderstorms. We see the lightning flash, then we hear the boom, and, and we're taught that, you know, the more you count, the further away the storm is. This actually puts a number to it. So if you hit start when you see the lightning, and then you hit stop when you hear the boom, you can look and it's about one kilometer off. Two kilometers, three kilometers, all the way up uh, to the top of the dial, which would be about 20 kilometers. Uh, 
Again, being an engineer, I had to work this out myself. I didn't take it at face value. Um, and I think they have the printing on the dial made more for an aesthetic than actually for a function. Uh, the speed of sound in air, you know, regular standard air, atmospheric air, is around 340 meters per second. So for a thunderclap to travel one kilometer, it's not exactly three seconds. It's a little bit off, but they put these numbers at every three second intervals. Again, I think it's just so that it looks more aesthetically nice. Uh, it is a little bit off. So as you obviously get to the larger numbers, it gets more and more off as the error compounds. But still, it's a cool function. It, it, it dresses up the dial nicely, but it's not the most accurate thing. Now the other one that's on the dial, and I think it's pretty cool, pulsometer. So this is useful for a nurse or for a doctor. If you want to measure someone's pulse by, by holding their hand, uh, their wrist, and, and measuring uh, the pulses. It says pulsometer base 30. So what you would do is you'd hit start when you start when you hold their wrist, and you'd start counting off beats. And when you get to 30 beats, you hit stop. And then the number in the pulsometer that corresponds to where the second is pointing is that person's pulse in beats per minute. So if you hit stop then, if you just counted off 30, you would see that the person's got about 120 beats per minute. That 15 seconds has elapsed if you want to really work it out. 15, 30 beats in 15 seconds times 4 is 60 times 4 is 120. So 120 beats per minute. I had done, what I did was 15 seconds times 4 is 60 and 30 beats times 4 is 120. But that's all the dial is doing and it goes all the way out to elephant type pulse or you know, maybe a, a free diver who was holding their breath for 6 or 7 minutes all the way down to 30 beats a minute. There's another watch that we sell with a pulsometer but this was a little more a little more interesting. This is the Aristo Doctor's Watch. Now it's not, it doesn't have a stopwatch, so you can't start and stop it, but it repeats the scale twice. Once on this half of the dial, once on this half of the dial. So you can start it every 30 seconds. You can start it when the second hand is passing 12. You can start it when the second hand is passing 30. How this one works now is this, if you can read it, a little Latin, but it's really graduations after 15 pulses. So you wait till the, the second hand is at the 30 or the zero. You start counting the person's pulses and when you hit 15 pulses, you look to see where the second hand is pointing and that will be the number of uh, beats per minute in the, uh, for the person's heart rate. So it's a cool little feature. Uh, the telemeter, the pulsometer, and then of course the extremely popular tachometer. Uh, on again probably one of the most iconic watches of our time uh, just a lot of people I don't think know what the tachymeter does or maybe they do so this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com with watch and learn number seven uh, showing you what a tachymeter is and then also a telemeter and a pulse a pulsometer on a watch you know out of all of them the pulsometer is probably the most useful you, you do see nurses doctors using their watches to time a uh, heartbeat so definitely use a usable function. The tachymeter, I think, is more for show nowadays. I don't think many people actually use it. If you do use it, hey, let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear how you actually use it uh, in, in daily life. You know, I remember I used to use the tachymeter just to see how fast you know, you were going in a car. You know, you'd see if you were going 60 miles an hour or 70. You know, measure a mile, and then you, you see the sign on the, the traffic sign says your, your exit's in one mile and then you get off and you look to see how many seconds had elapsed and then you know about your average speed. Anyway, uh, this has been Watch and Learn number seven. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below and I will be sure to address them. Thank you very much.